I want to talk to you guys about replacing a bearing beam with a flush beam. This was our mission last week. The client of ours had an existing wood beam below the ceiling and it had two posts coming down. And he didn't like seeing the posts. The decision was made to install a beam that would span 20 plus feet through the entire kitchen without posts and be recessed in the ceiling. Depending on the situation, application, and the size of the beam and budget, there are options. While not always the case, many replacement LVL beams are deeper than the older ceiling joists and they simply just can't be hidden. In these situations, when you run into this, you've got some decisions to make, you have choices. You can install the beam below the ceiling so it's exposed or close it in and trim it out with an opening. You can recess a larger beam into the ceiling space and leave some of it protruding below the ceiling plane. You can have an engineer specify a steel beam to go up inside the joist bay and be completely flush. Also, if there's an unfinished attic or garage type space above, you can install a bigger beam, deeper beam flush and protrude it up into the space above. All right, let's talk about engineering. <clears throat> our problem was that our span uh, required an LVL that was just too, too deep. We couldn't use it for the floor joist and it would project about eight or 10 inches below. So we went to a local steel company and they supply prep and, and help us install a steel beam. We supply them with the length of the beam, the entire length minus a quarter inch so they can get it in there. And we specify <clears throat> that we wanted this beam to fit within a two by 10 joist bay cavity. Steel beam company then uses a local structural engineer who specified a W8 by 58 steel beam with four by six PSL post, uh, posting down to point load. Now uh, let's talk about the bolts on the beam because we needed to bolt wood to it. We supply the steel company with our floor joist measurement so that they can drill half inch holes for bolts in between, they, so they land in between um, our floor joists. This is so we can install solid lumber and we bolt it to the beam. Carriage bolts or threaded rod can be used to secure this wood to the beam. And this is where we hang our uh, joists to. The threaded rod, here's a great tip. The threaded rod is more affordable and it's easier sourced. So just keep that in mind. Now, once we get delivery of the beam, we then need to prep it. Prepping install, uh, in, entails installing solid wood on either side of the beam so that we can hang those joists to. And this is called packing the beam. We used three two by eight boards um, so that they could extend out past the top and bottom of the steel flange on the beam. This solid wood allows attachment of joists via joist hangers. Now, when installing the solid wood, the area where the top and bottom flanges meet the vertical of the I-beam, that's called the web. And that area is slightly rounded usually. So we beveled our two long edges, edges on one side of our two by eight to fit in first. And that makes installation a heck of a lot easier. Now let's talk about preparing to, to get this installed done. Prior to removing our bearing wall or bearing beam, we have to remove, um, we need to remove the ceiling board on either side to expose the framing. This is the time to remove wires, pipes, and ductwork that are in your way of getting that beam up flush. You wanna strip the ceiling back at least two or three feet. In our case, we went a little bit more um, back from that wall or beam. And then you wanna install temporary walls. And these are gonna be temporary shoring walls. This is needed, um, this, is, this is so that you can take the weight off the bearing wall area. Now, in our case, we built our wall four feet back due to a kitchen island being in the way and the need for a four foot corridor to allow the Sumner roustabout lifts that we were gonna to use to be able to roll in. We didn't want the wall to be in the way and have to move the wall. The beam itself weighed more than one lift could handle, so we needed two lifts. And we needed 48 inches of clearance to get the beam down on the other side of the island and then 48 inches on either side of the island and directly under the beam. Now, in some cases, one lift can do it right dead in the middle, right under the beam. Uh, here's a tip for you guys. Before building your temporary walls and, and just locking that in place, talk to your steel fabricator and see what they need for clearance for their lift. You don't want to move that wall later. Now, as far as building that temporary wall, the, the shoring walls, you want to attach studs to top and bottom plates. Like I said, two, three, four feet back from whatever you're removing. You want to ensure a snug fit by cutting your joists about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch long and then tapping them in place. Place a stud under each joist, ceiling joist, 
um, use two or three three inch number 10 screws top and bottom to lock it in. Weight loading on these temporary studs will occur once you remove your beam wall or, or beam. Uh, in our case, we noticed uh, a little bit of loading once we cut our two vertical posts. Okay, the other thing you want to think about on your temporary walls is you might want to do uh, diagonal or horizontal bracing to just help prevent some, some temporary uh, studs from bowing. And think about if you need upper or lower temporary walls. So with only a floor load and an attic above us to support, I felt okay with just using our one wall and our four foot back span. But in more complicated cases where there is a posted ridge maybe or other substantial load above, I always consult a structural engineer for the, um, who will spec out distances, connectors, and proper removal sequences. If there's a load bearing wall above you, then you that you don't want to remove, you need to support that as well to take the weight off of the wall that you're removing. So that's gonna need a, a shoring wall above, like stacked above. Otherwise that upper wall that you're supporting will only be supported by the floor while you're doing this work. That's not good. Okay, let's talk about the joist beam pocket or cutting out the joist beam pocket. That's the area that we're gonna cut out, the joists that overlap the old beam that we're gonna cut out to recess our new beam. We were removing one beam and replacing it with a flush beam. And it basically goes in the same location, right? So um, we basically used the same locations where it was attached on the sides but we then needed to cut up into the joist base. So we measured our beam width and we added a half an inch, a quarter inch, quarter inch on either side to allow an easier installation for the steel beam to go in. Steel doesn't bend, so you wanna make sure you've got room. We used a laser to, to connect the lines from the two walls and we marked those with uh, speed squares and then basically started to cut with the circular saw and finished with a reciprocating saw. Circular saw gives you a much straighter cut and a good line to start from. Now, after cutting the beam pocket, we clean up all the stray nails that are sticking down from the plywood above, from the floor above. We use end nippers to nip those flush or a reciprocating saw to cut them. I will note that um, if you don't do this, if you miss a few stray nails, you will push them up through the subfloor or finished floor above. So make sure you take care of that. Okay, let's talk about installing the beam. Once the beam pocket was prepped, we used two Sumner roustabout lifts to position uh, the beam, put the beam on them and rolled it in place basically, and then lifted and then jacked the beam up into place in a couple different um, sequences. The Sumner roustabout lifts enable one person to lift and place loads in tight places that would almost be impossible with other lifts. One lift can lift 1,500 pound load up to 25 feet. Now our beam was 1,500 pounds, so that's why we needed two of them. Next, we did the uh, beam support post and took care of point load. So uh, the engineer specified four by six PSL engineered posts and we installed them under each end of the beam. We basically uh, cut them about an eighth inch long, put the bottom in first, tap the top in with a sledgehammer along the top of the beam, sliding along the top of the beam. Uh, nice and easy. It should, should not have to beat this in place. Not a lot of force is needed. Uh, remember, the, the jacks are still holding the weight up for you. Just get those in nice and, and easy. Then we used a quarter inch steel L brackets. We attached them to the post with our timber lock screws and then they're welded to the beam. So that locks the beam to the posts. If able, add and attach additional PSL posts or studs uh, to the wall framing next to the beam, kind of lock it all in place, which is nice. Um, the bearing points for a new beam have to be transferred. The weight has to be transferred all the way down to the foundation. It's called point load, which means the engineer will require you to make sure that the area between the floor joists is blocked so that that post carries to a, a blocking to another post or foundation below. It's your job to make sure that this is done um, and you need to fix it if it's not. Prior to hanging the joist, we used an LVL and hydraulic jack, 12 foot long LVL, to level the joists to the beam a little bit. We used number 10 joist hanger nails to fasten two by 10 Simpson joist hangers on every joist to the beam. Two by 10 joist hangers have these diagonal holes called double share nail nailing. And these lock the beam in place and prevent pullouts also for structural reasons. Longer fasteners are needed and required for double shear nailing. Some folks don't do this. Use either 16 inch sinkers or Simpson Strong Tie Strong Drive SD connector screws. And that's what we used. Once the beam is in and inspected, 
Now it's time to just strap the ceiling, finish the wallboard, and finish it off. The room is now wide open and no posts. Guys, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Also, leave us a comment. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. We try to reply to all of your comments. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time here at Concord Carpenter.